Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. When we last left off uh, with Alone in the Dark, I did say when we finished that game, we're going to play something fun. And I meant it. Actually, thinking about that, I'm not sure if, uh, at the time of recording this, if Alone in the Dark 2008 has even finished going up. Mainly because I had to completely restart recording that series, because noise gate issues yeah uh ugh. also this series that we're about to play now um i got about 25 percent through the game before i decided to scrap that what i'd already uh recorded and start again now reasons for this are this game came out on the playstation 2 the gamecube and the xbox now the xbox was the lead platform the Xbox version was superior to the other versions. Um, it was a little bit better than the GameCube version, but the PS2 version of uh, Metal Arms doesn't even compare. Um, the PS2 was a great system. It was the most popular system of that generation. In fact, one of the most popular, no, sorry, the most popular system of all time, and it had some fantastic games. But from a hardware um power standpoint it was not even close to the gamecube and uh, especially the og xbox but i had some issues when i started to record this game when i was narrowing down what version i wanted to play no brainer right xbox og xbox version well in europe or the uk unfortunately the og xbox version does not run in progressive scan. So you get a lot of horrible interfacing artifacts when I try and record it from my Xbox. No problem, that's okay. I will just run it on the Xbox 360. So it will look nicer because it upscales it and my God, it does look quite nice on the Xbox 360. However, the emulation is awful. Uh, what do I mean by that? The, the only real problem with it is the frame rate. And it is quite a significant problem. The frame rate in big heavy action scenes does drop down into the single digit kind of, um, kind of area. And it's borderline unplayable for me because I'm very sensitive to frame rates. Now, that's a shame. So the further we got into the game, the bigger the battles that got, the more this became evidence. Also, there's a heck of a lot of screen tearing on the Xbox 360. Yeah, big problem. So although it looks very sharp, it's a mess. So recording from the OG Xbox is out because for some reason, as I said, it's one of the very few games that isn't progressive scan. Um, recording the PlayStation 2 version is definitely out because it's hot garbage um if it's the only way you can play the game then fine you know it's still the same game you're just getting a very watered down version uh the gamecube has most of the visual upgrades over the playstation 2 version um and it does have a nice smooth 60 fps sometimes <laughs> sometimes it doesn't have the cool textures it does seem to be slightly lower resolution but the frame rate is good and it, it does have all of the nice um lighting effects and things you just don't get the bump mapping which to be honest on a youtube video you don't really notice anyway uh what i'll do at the end of this first video I'll have a bit of a comparison between um, all the different versions. So my GameCube is actually dead. It needs a new laser, which I may never actually be bothered to ever replace it. Uh, my Wii, I can't be bothered to set that up because uh, I'll have to record through component cables and fuck that noise. So we're going to be playing this on the Wii U. Yes, we're going to be playing a GameCube game on the Wii U. Uh, now, in before somebody says, yeah, but that's not possible. Yes, it is. The Wii U is natively compatible with GameCube games. Almost. 
Um, what do I mean by that? Well, the Wii U has the same architecture as the Wii, which had the same architecture as the GameCube. The Wii was just a slightly uh, improved GameCube, and the Wii U was just a turbocharged Wii. It really is that simple. So the architecture of the Wii U is, you know, like <laughs> it was like 12 years old when the Wii U actually came out. But because of that, it is natively backwards compatible. For some reason, Nintendo locked this feature out of the machine. Now, the Wii U drive will not accept GameCube discs. Um, I, I don't know why. Nintendo went absolutely out of their way to make damn sure that the Wii U was a failure. I don't know why you'd build in hardware or just have hardware backwards compatibility. Flawless hardware backwards compatibility, but not support it. Don't know, Chief. Uh, there is one problem with the control pads, obviously, but that is very easy to get around on the Wii U. You can buy the uh, GameCube to Wii U slash Switch adapter. Nintendo actually made one officially but they're very hard and very expensive to get so i just have like a third party one looks exactly the same it's just got a switch on the back where you can switch from um pc to wii u to switch uh so yes you can load up all of your gamecube games on an sd card as long as you've modded your wii u wii u is very 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 easy to mod if you have a Wii U and you haven't modded it, you you should. You really should. Uh, it opens up all of the features that should have been there, uh, which is quite interesting. So yes, slap an SD card in, get yourself Nintendo, and enjoy your Wii U games. Ah, uh, well, your GameCube games on your Wii U. How do they run? Like we said. It's native compatibility, so they run perfectly. Anyway, let's go to Metal Arms. Had to get that out of the way. So Metal Arms, Glitch in the System. What is this game? Well, this is a game made by... Yeah, you're going to get that because I have one... I've got it to force in progressive scan mode, but you don't need to because you get an option there. <laughs> so that's why it does that. There's a lot of options with Nintendo. Anyway, so Metal Arms Glitch in the System. It is a very, very underrated game. This game has a huge cult following. And when it was first released back in 2003, um, it was actually planned as a trilogy. This was a big budget affair. Uh, it was published by Sierra, and it was made by these guys, Swinging Ape Studios. Now, they only made one game. That was this one. And it's really unfortunate, because they are all ex-developers from Midway. Midway, obviously a legendary developer in its own right. So this game is... <sighs> Best way to describe it is it's Ratchet and Clank, but with robots set on a planet called Iron Star. And we are a mysterious droid that is found in a load of rubble. We're dug out by rebels. Rebels that are fighting for survival against an evil overlord called General Corrosive. Uh, Storyline in this game is actually pretty bloody good. So are the visuals. You may notice that. This game really pushed some boundaries with physics and locational damage and particle effects. Uh, it's also quite a long game. It's also a very hard game this has an old school difficulty where it does not hold your hand this game if you're not careful will fuck you in the ass repeatedly um but it's also a brilliant game a fun game a game that should have been a trilogy but even though the reviews for the game at the time were off the charts this game really undersold badly like critically badly uh, which was a shame. So, Swinging Ape Studios, which is now owned by Blizzard, by the way. Although they've been, um, you know, taken apart and probably all fired. But all the IPs, including Metal Arms, well, all the IPs, their only IP, is now owned by Blizzard. Uh, after this game, and after Blizzard being very 
uh, blown away by the talent that they had, put them to work on another game that never saw the light of day. A game that some people may know called um, StarCraft Ghosts. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's called StarCraft Ghosts. Everybody knows about that very famous cancelled project. Um, and after that, obviously, I guess the company was dissolved, which was a shame. Anyway, after nearly 10 minutes of me waffling, one failed playthrough of this under our belts already. And about, uh, I think this is the second time of me trying to record this intro. Because I have just done all of this with my microphone turned off. Yes, I'm that stupid. Let's go. Metal Arms glitching the system. A freaking awesomely underrated game. Uh, we're going to go memory card. Uh, test has already been done. We're going to go create new. We are going to... Oh, God, remember these. Uh, not a huge fan of the GameCube control pad. It's not bad. It's not a fucking Wiimote. I'll tell you that. So it gets... It gets points for that. Uh, but it it's weird. I mean, it looks like a Fisher-Price kid's toy. Especially if you have the purple one, which is what I have here. Um, now, I could use the wave bird. But for some reason, I struggle to get that to work on my Wii U. It works on my Wii, which is also modded, but not on the Wii U for some reason. Never mind. The standard controllers work perfectly. So, let's go. Uh, we're going to start a new adventure. We have settings to edit. There's nothing really to play around with. Uh, there's more options on the Xbox, actually, which is interesting. Uh, but hey, there we go. Let's start adventure. Now, as I said, this game is hard. This game is very, very hard. There's no regenerating health here, kids. No, no regenerating ammo either, apart from one weapon. So that can be a problem because you do burn through your ammo pretty quickly. Like I said, this is basically uh, the closest thing I can think to it is Ratchet and Clank. Get him back to Droid Town. The Colonel will know what to do. Check out that strange marking. Hey, Crunk. Were you able to repair our mystery bot? Of course I f***ing fixed him. It was a huge pain in the f***ing waistband, because he's some kind of custom jobby, but nothing I couldn't handle. Some of his memory chips were fried, so he'll need a new data upload. But after that, he should be as good as f***ing new. Huh. Does his ID chip still function? Yes, as his name is Glitch. All right, Glitch. Welcome to the Droid Rebellion. Take our new fixer-upper to data upload and get him back online. Now, ladies! Yes, sir! Okay, just sit back and try to relax, Glitch. You might feel a little jolt, but that's just us restoring your standard droid data bank memory. Current limits, but his experiment went terribly wrong. 
An horrific explosion destroyed his lab and resulted in the creation of a powerful, sadistic military bot known as General Corrosive. The remains of Dr. Exavolt were never found, but his memory lived on to inspire the next generation of droids. The evil General Corrosive rose to power and led his army of mill troops to attack the droids, sending their once peaceful nation into a tailspin of terror and destruction. The droids that remained were cast into slavery in the factories and mines of their mill overlords. Those who refused were immediately deactivated and recycled. As fate seemed to cast a shadow over the droid civilization, a ragtag band of bots led by the heroic Colonel Alloy were able to carve out one last vestige of hope, a single city known as Droid Town. It is here that the droids make their final stand, calling on all willing and able droids to rise up in rebellion before it's too late. Attention! side of the mines and are about to come marching their rusted metal chassis into droid town somebody's got to seal off those mines and bury those mills pronto so where are my heroes which of you brave troopers is up to the task All right, <laughs> learn fast or die trying. Words to live by. Okay, so here we are. This is a glitch. We start off with our basic weapon, which is our mining laser, an industrial four megawatt geological laser modified to blow apart millbot chassis. Yeah, it's uh, uh, shit, but hey, that's fine. Now, it's always worth having a little bit of an explore around. Because there are hidden caches of items. Alright, screwed and hosed. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Yeah. I like these little ore carriers here. And he's got his little uh, little puddle of oil there. Or a little bowl of oil which he can drink. I like it. They keep these things as pets by the look of things. Uh, Yeah. The mills are having a bit of a good time down in our mine. Well, that's not going to fly. Alright. Good thing we've been uh, unleashed with some, well, experienced troops. Let's just say that. Let's go, boys. Now, there are some hidden collectibles in this game. Yep. Yes, thank you. Yep, yep, yep. We know what we're doing. So, um, there are some hidden collectibles in this game. We're not going to get them all. Oh, shit. They... Yeah, things are getting pretty bad out here. We're going to go for the ones that we can, but we're not going to worry too much about it. Basically, you can find secret golden chips. Uh, and there's X amount of those on each level. What do they do? Well, they unlock multiplayer maps, so they're not that useful. There are also golden washers to find. Golden washers are worth 25 washers, whereas white washers are worth one washer. Washers are currency. I don't know where they all are. And it's very hard to actually find a... Um, 
guide of this game, which has everything in it. Alrighty. Now, I found guides that seem to have most of the uh, secret chips, if not all of them. But we don't care about the secret chips because they just unlock multiplayer maps. And we don't care about the multiplayer maps. I mean, these days, we just buy our multiplayer maps, right? Right? Yeah, this was a simpler time. Okay. Now the game is teaching us the jumping mechanics, which aren't actually too bad. The, ga the controls for this game have actually aged very, very well. Hey, friend arena. Ooh. Yeah, we'll do that. Don't worry. Now, the mining laser has unlimited ammo, but it does run out of charge. And it does take a while to charge up, which sucks. Come get it, Millbot. Alright, let's go for this. Now, one cool thing about this game is the locational damage you can see that we're doing. And we also have a melee attack, which doesn't do a lot of damage, but it fucks them up. Which is great, as you can see. You can break all sorts of parts of the enemies, which is good. There's a washer. Collect washers to purchase weapons and upgrades from your friendly neighborhood barter droids. Indeed. Ah, <sighs> money. Now, one thing to note is if that's health. One thing to note, if you do smash... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got an activation chip. We got it. We got it. We got it. So if you do smash and disable parts of the enemy droids, uh, for instance, their weapon, they can still fire their weapon, but it just kind of dangles and flails around all over the place. Uh, pretty, pretty good. The, as I said, the damage locations for the enemies is very impressive. Um, you didn't see anything like that back then. Not really. Uh, you can destroy the legs as well, but there's little point and our laser's overheated. Let's go. Let's keep pushing these milk bastards out of the mines. Come on, screwed and hosed. Oh, God. Now, you will die very, very, very quickly. You can see up in the uh, left corner there, we have one battery. Ah. Oof. That's not great. One battery will drain really quickly. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Look, here we go. Yeah, we actually have like physics in this game as well. This is why this game's a little bit much for the PS2. There's quite a lot of uh, physics being calculated here. Now, the Xbox has a lot better particles. When the enemies explode, you see a lot more pieces go flying around. But, you know, it is what it is. This version of the game certainly is not bad. Take this coring charge and throw it at those rocks. Nice. Free those trapped miners. So we have a coring charge. These standard yield explosive mining charges can obliterate a mill into metal chum. Yes, it can. Right, now we've saved those guys. Oh, no. We have an ore carrier that's been flattened. Yeah, so think of those batteries, although even though we only have the single battery, as energy tanks from Metroid. We will find more of them. Secret chip. The secret computer chips are scattered throughout the planet. Collect them to unlock additional multiplayer levels. Yeah. We'll, we'll grab them if we can, but we don't really care too much about them, to be honest. They, they literally do nothing for us at all. Coring charges. We can hold 10 of these. Uh, and they're everywhere. Grenades are very plentiful, like Halo, which is good. Uh, but they do hurt. Grenades really hurt. Alright, let's go. You chaps go round, and uh, I'm going to slide my ass down here. Oof. Alright, not bad, not bad. Hey, guys. That was fast. Yeah, that was very fast. All right, let's go. That door will not open. Right the the 
Yep, that's pretty cool, but I'm going to go get a secret chip. Now, uh, that cutscene, funny enough, when we're playing the emulated version on the uh, 360, that cutscene does not play, but it does on the OG original Xbox. There's actually a couple of cutscenes I've noticed like that that don't trigger when you're playing on the 360. Nothing game-breaking, but just annoying little things. Uh, now, if you're thinking about trying this on the emulator um, Dolphin or the PlayStation 2 emulator, you can, but this is a very notoriously difficult game to emulate. So, at your own risk, I would say with that. Right, let's get some nades around here. Now, as I said, they were whinging. There's way too many of them, and there's a few, but we can use grenades. Grenades are crazy powerful. Let's just shred the rest of these mill scum. Mill scum! Now, note the grenades. If they don't touch an enemy, they'll just land and um, you'll have like a little countdown timer uh, before the grenade detonates. If uh, they hit an enemy, they will detonate on impact. So, use that to your advantage. And there is the second chip for this level. Not bad. Not bad at all, Glitch. All right, let's get back. So, checkpoint. this game is heavily based on checkpoints. Um, sometimes it's not too bad. Other times it's pretty savage. But uh, we'll see how we go. I mean, I remember this game being very difficult. And indeed, in some of the reviews, it was mentioned to be very difficult as well. Right, let's get the frick out of here. Oh, we're actually damaged. You can see we've got bits... Kind of falling off us. So yes, we can use um, our hand as a brake here, which is really freaking cool. Not bad, Glitch. Not bad. And with that, that is the first mission completed. Two more chips to unlock a multiplayer level. Right, anyway guys, I'm going to leave this one here. This is a demo video, if you will. Going to go watch this back, make sure everything's okay. I am going to patch in. Um, some examples of the different versions of the game. Uh, I have recorded the 360, the Xbox, and obviously you don't really need to see any comparisons of this version because that's the version we're playing, but I'll include the same section anyway, just so you can get a good idea. Uh, I think that's it. Yes, that is it for the first video. Thank you.
bruised and screwed. No time for tears. You're on your own for now. Get the hell to the other side, pronto. Try finding a weapon to cut those wires. Screwed. No time for tears. You're on your own for now. Get the hell to the other side, pronto. Try finding a weapon to cut those wires. Finding a weapon to cut those wires. 